I have produced and sold this design thousands of times. And in this video, I will show you how to get extremely clean, fast and reliable prints through optimized slicer settings. As a disclaimer, at some point of this video, you might think that this German guy right here is a little crazy. But at these production numbers, every gram, second and detail count. And we are here to take it all. Before we start, let's make sure I'm not just making all of this up. This Etsy sales screenshot shows the total egg cup orders in sets of six. Combined with my eBay sales, I've printed and sold a total of around 4,000 egg cups exclusively in Germany, leading to 14,000 euros of revenue in the last two years. If you would like to take this design to the global market as a reseller, then take a look at my thanks memberships through the link in the description. Let's get started by analyzing a standard print profile in Bamboo Studio. This optimization works nearly identical in other slicers, but I recommend the Prusa Bamboo or Orca slicer. First, turn on the advanced mode to see all settings. The profile has two walls, five top layers and three bottom layers. A look at the preview shows that we have lots of internal solid infill and sparse infill in areas where it's not needed. The top and bottom linear pattern doesn't fit either. If we visualize the travel moves, we can see that the extruder head crosses the inner wall multiple times on every layer. Check out my last video to find out how this can reduce your print quality to the level of a cheesy spaghetti meal. Additionally, the printer Z-Hop does little circle moves due to the active Z-Hop. Let's start the optimization by getting rid of all the unnecessary stuff until we have a lean shell of the design. Reduce the top and bottom layers to 1 and set the infill to 0%. A quick look at the preview shows that nearly all the unnecessary infill is gone except this part right here. But why does that happen? To fix this, you can either set the top shell thickness to 0 or uncheck ensure vertical shell thickness. This simple setting led to a lot of confusion in my previous video. The Bumbo wiki shows that when enabled, the slicer makes sure to add infill where the part will otherwise be too thin. In our case, this is unwanted and with it being disabled, we get the desired result. Our next step is to fix the travel moves of the extruder head by enabling avoid crossing walls. You can set the max detour length to 200. With this problem solved, go over to the strength tab and set all patterns to concentric to fit the circular egg cup design. Now I will also disable Z-Hop. Some people like this setting, but for me it doesn't show any print improvements and only increases print time. To do this, click on your printer settings and go to the extruder tab to set Z-Hop when retracted to zero. At last, we will activate the speed color scheme to have a look at the real print speeds. The print speeds are all over the place. This will lead to uneven surface gloss and should especially be avoided when using matte filament. To fix this, go to the speed tab and uncheck slow down for overhangs. We will add this back later to areas where it's needed. Additionally, go to your filament settings and the cooling tab. Here we can disable slow printing down for better layer cooling. Another look at the preview shows that now we finally have uniform print speeds, a minimal shell and no more wall crossing movements. The only problem is that to my latest knowledge, printers can print filament into thin air and we need more than one top and bottom layer. Here is where we will add little helpers called modifiers. Before we add modifiers, we have to make sure that the first layer is one thing in particular. Reliable. For that, we will add a little extra squish by slightly reducing the Z offset in the printer settings. Go over to machine start G code and search for the G29.1 command and slightly increase the offset. Other printers may have this option directly in the printer's menu. Now, if you print it like this, the product will have a sharp little edge, which looks like it's low quality. To get rid of this edge, increase the elephant foot compensation by 0.1 millimeters to slightly shrink the first layer. Now there's another tiny problem. Did you catch it? It's right here. Sometimes the print will start the bottom surface in the center of the circle shape where it doesn't have other lines to adhere to. This tiny detail can lead to an ugly surface or even a first failed layer. Now the fix for this is a weird one. But if you slightly increase or decrease the line width of the first layer, the extruder head will take a different travel path from the outside to the inside of the first layer, which is way more reliable. If you like this detailed type of content so far, hit that like button, subscribe or leave a comment below. Now let's finally add some of those spicy modifiers. In the prepare tab, click on objects and right click your geometry file. Go to add modifier and select a fitting shape, like cylinder. Our egg cup center coordinates 
are at 128 in x and y direction. We will enter the same number for our modifier. Next, we will resize the little guy to our needs. You don't have to be too accurate here. As we only want to modify the first few layers, 2mm height is more than enough. Entering exactly half of the height as the z-coordinate, we'll place it right at the bottom of the geometry. Let's give it a creative name, like bottom. Then go to the modifier strength tab and set the bottom layers to 3. The preview shows that in the overlapping area of the modifier and egg cup, the print now has three bottom layers. This Mr. Bottom modifier is pretty handy if you ask me. For an even more reliable first layer, click on global settings, go to the speed tab and reduce the first layer speed to 30. Always keep in mind that reliability comes first and speed second to prevent wasting material, money and downtime. Now it's finally time to address the elephant in the room. How will we fix this floating inside wall? A popular comment on another video was to just enable lightning infill. So let's try this out and I will show you why this can be a suboptimal solution. You can already see during the printing process that lightning infill uses lots of thin lines that are just enough to support the first top layer. If you take a closer look at the result, you will notice that the inner shape wiggles around quite a bit and approximately every 30 egg cups fades completely. It's an easy solution, but in this case not reliable. An even bigger issue is that lightning infill somehow adds material in areas where it's not needed. Lightning infill can be great, but not for all geometries. A better solution is to add a pillar in form of a handy modifier. Go to prepare, right click on the main file and add another cylindrical modifier. Resize it as you see fit and enter the center coordinates for its position. Add some sparse infill density and select your infill type. In this case, we use rectilinear. Also make sure slow down for overhangs is enabled to get a clean inside shape. Let's print this new structure out and compare it to the lightning infill one. The printing process shows that we have a clean infill pillar and minimal retractions. A little bending test verifies the superior sturdiness. This hasn't failed a single time over thousands of prints. Now we only need more top layers and a thicker inside shape. Increasing the top layer count will make the first few layers of the inside shape strong and clean. But the cylinder doesn't cover all the overhanging geometry. Our cylindrical modifier definitely needs the help of a friend. Let's add a happy little modifier like we did earlier. Once the sphere has the right position and size, we increase the top layer count to 3 or set the shell thickness to 0.6 with ensure vertical shell thickness enabled. The preview shows that we now have the desired extra lines for the overhangs. Before we fix these weird bridges, it's important to know that the settings of the last modifier in the list take priority over all other modifiers. You can always drag and drop them to change priority. Now here this doesn't fix the bridging bug. But resizing or slightly moving the modifier does the trick. Hopefully Bambulab will fix this soon, but now we have a perfect result. If you are also in need for some extra project support like this modifier provides, check out this video sponsor PCBWay. PCBWay offers a variety of services including metal 3D printing, custom PCBs and more. Just select your production process, upload a geometry file, select your quantity plus material, and get an instant quote for your custom part at an affordable price. Thank you to PCBWay for supporting this channel. Our optimization is nearly done. Just the top areas are in need for some extra love. So let's add another friendly modifier. By now I'm sure you know how this is done. A thin modifier for the last few top layers is enough. Increase its top layer count to 3. I also recommend slightly reducing the width of all visible top layer lines to get cleaner top surfaces. Now here comes another tiny detail that makes a big difference. You want to avoid those single dot extrusions. This test print shows that those little dots lead to an uneven surface which is only good for scratching itchy skin. Fix this by slightly changing the top surface line width until you have those tiny triangles instead of single point extrusions. We will do the same for the inside shape of the egg cup by selecting the highest priority modifier of that area and reducing the line width to the desired result. The preview shows that this is just how we wanted it to be. Before we take a detailed look at the final printed result, 
let's slightly reduce the print speed of all top surfaces to get the cleanest result possible. You may have also noticed that the seam is no longer aligned. Rotating the main geometry just a tiny bit will fix this. The final slice shows that we now only have material where we truly need it. We have reduced our printing time by 30% and the used material by 31%, all while increasing reliability and surface quality. Using my favorite printer, the X1 Carbon, we achieve a clean print with no defects and smooth top surfaces. In my book, this is a perfect print. Now I can already guess what some comments will look like. So let's test it. Squeezing the egg cup as hard as I can only leads to temporary deformation and leaves visible marks on my fingers. For this shape and design, the number of top and bottom layers as well as the walls are more than sufficient. Try optimizing your own prints and comment below if this video has helped you out. Click here for more videos like this one and thank you for watching.